like to welcome all of you to worship here at College Hill Presbyterian Church in Tulsa. We're glad that you have joined us. For those uh, joining us online, uh, either watching live right now or later on, we're also very glad you have joined us. Uh, as always, if you got an email, there will be uh, a click uh, link to our bulletin insert, which will have the hymns and the announcements, so you can really follow along with the rest of us. Um, I want to begin by saying Happy Father's Day and also recognize uh, there's a worship register you'll find at the middle of the pew. We ask that you sign it, pass it down, back again, you'll see who you're worshiping around this day. Uh, you know what, there's uh, one of the things that got lost in the shuffle over the pandemic over the last two and a half years is our name tags. Oh my gosh, I see somebody wearing one. Oh my gosh. Um, Let's start wearing our name tags again, okay? And if yours isn't on the rack inside the Fellowship Hall, uh, make a note. We will make you another one. We, uh, we need to start remembering who each other are. So let's, let's do that by uh, increasing our fellowship by knowing our names and by wearing our name tags, please. Uh, really big news this week is we have entered Phase 4 of our reunion uh, COVID protocols. The uh, reunion team met last week and the session on Tuesday to approve this new normal. And you were sent an email with a list of all of those things, so please read that carefully. I think the most important things to recognize is that we are going to start going back to serving communion by intention where you can come forward down the middle aisle in the old-fashioned way of taking off a piece of bread, dipping it in the cup, but also recognizing where we still are in all of this, there will be a no-touch option at the table that you can come to where uh, you can take your own bread and take your own cup uh, so, so no one else you know has touched it. And as that kind of goes along with our gluten-free option that we also have up at the table. So that's how we're going to do communion. This week is the first time we also get to share the passing of the peace. Now, this is, yay, this is huge and uh, considered not extremely dangerous. However, for those of you who choose not to be uh, handshaken and hugged, which is our tendency, um, we'll figure this out, but it might be best just to stay, remain seated, so people who see those who are seated will, will not engage physically with you, but can still come up and, and pass the peace with you. Um, my only other option was to do what the Catholics do. If you go up forward to get communion and you're not Catholic and you want a blessing, you go up and just do this. But that looks too much like Wakanda in this day and age so i didn't want you to stand and have to do this so just just stay seated we will come and greet you anyway that's uh, very important and also we get to do potlucks again for the first time in two and a half years so all of those things are all uh, very important um we are still trying to get back into the scheme of things with doing fellowship at 10 30 to have a cup of coffee. We used to have lots and lots of folks, of course, show up early so they could fellowship with one another. Uh, right now, dear old Fred Shoney has volunteered to take this entire month to set up the coffee. It's pretty easy. The setup will stay there um, every week. What you pretty much need to do is just hit the button a couple times after putting the coffee in the machine. So come at 10, 15, it, that'll take care of it. But we need volunteers to help do that. So uh, please let Emily Oldham or even myself know that would be great. As you'll notice, the chancel choir is in recess, uh, but the bell choir will be playing one more time um, at the end of this month. So uh, we're exceptionally pleased now we have this season of soloists and duets and, and instrumentalists, which we're very excited about. And uh, please note there about the Tulsa Pride Parade. Um, this, uh, see this stall? Brand new, huh? You like this stall? It's called a sunshine stall. Of course, it kind of fits with LGBTQ inclusion, and this is Pride Month, so I thought we'd wear this today. Brand new. Um, we're looking for marchers. See Mike, uh, Patter, uh, Mike Gibson if you're interested in that. And with that, I want to turn it over now to Susan West, who will again be reminding folks, as I will with the time with the children, 
of our intergenerational vacation church school, which is coming up this week. <laughs> so vacation church school is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. And our theme is what does the Bible have to say about kindness? And so we're looking at kindness for other people with this, our service projects that we're going to be working on, but also kindness with each other because this is a really our first opportunity to uh, be able to have fellowship openly with each other and have sharing food and being inside in the air conditioning instead of outside in the heat. Uh, when we're having fellowships. So this is really important for us and it's everybody can come. You don't even have to participate in the service projects or the music or the lesson uh, or dinner. And if you want dinner, I keep reminding people you need to let me know. Uh, we will provide dinner for everybody who comes. Uh, but it's just our first opportunity to be back together as a family. And it's, I'm so excited about this because this is one of the things I've missed so much in the past couple of years, and I'm just thrilled. Uh, and child care will be available for the little guys. They will come uh, share a meal with us, but then they can go do their own thing uh, upstairs with wine. And so um, I'm so excited. And even if you don't want to participate in the things we're doing, we will have, I think I'll bring a big puzzle for people who don't want to participate in the activities can at least sit and chat with somebody that they haven't chatted with for a while. So uh, something for everybody, we hope, and we hope to see you all on Tuesday evening at 6. Thanks.
which lies in body or spirit for the invitation to worship. We come to this place as people of faith. The Spirit of God invites us here. We gather today especially to think about those who feel the pain of mental illness and those who walk with them as they struggle to live with their health issues. Help us, O oh God, to support and sustain them. We gather to learn about the needs of those who are feared or maligned by their neighbors and those whose energies are sapped by dealing with often uncaring and closed communities. Keep us, O oh God, from compounding the pain that is inflicted on your people by illness, ignorance, and stigma. We gather to offer God a commitment that our work in ministry is to be a way of rendering compassion and service to fellow human beings, thus an opportunity to give glory to God. Through our speaking, listening, singing, and learning, we offer now our gratitude to God, who creates, leads, and sustains. Let us worship God. Thank you. 
continues to grow in our ability to be compassionate and understanding of all people. Hear now the silent prayers of confession and reflection. In Christ there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Everything has become new. May the God of mercy, who forgives our sins, strengthen us in all goodness. Amen. <clears throat> Got some more kids coming up? I think we do. Hi. <laughs> we got some spots for you. Yep, two more. They're on their way. It's good to see some of you back. You've been traveling and gone. Have a seat. Hey, scooch over just a little bit so they can fit in. Here, want to sit here? 
Well, today is a special day, right? Father's Day. It's Father's Day. Um, we, we all have fathers. We were all had fathers. Um, so we are celebrating that today. But yes. You gave your father a present. It was actually a Lego set. You gave your father a Lego set? <laughs> Was that for him? Was that for him or for you? Oh, it's for him. Oh, 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 oh. And the wife says, no, it is for him. That's awesome. Uh, we want to see a picture when it's done. Um, so make sure you give thanks to uh, and whether it's fathers, but also your guardians, your grandparents, all those who help take care of you in life. Um, some people come from families that have two fathers. Some people come from families with two mothers. So things are, are, are different than how we used to celebrate Father's Day back when I was your age. So make sure that whoever takes kid care of you to give them an extra hug and say you love them. Okay, I want you to define a word for me. What does the word kindness mean? What does it mean to be kind to somebody? It means you can be nice to somebody. Oh, that's exactly what I was going to say. That awesome. What else? It is also the day after my birthday celebration. Well, happy post birthday. Did you get a Lego set? No. Oh, God. And, oh, but you got cool. I bet you gave him a cool toy. A pickaxe that turns into a sword. Lovely children's toys these years. Woo! Okay. Uh, hey, I'm moving on. Um, again, back. Speaking of kindness, kindness would mean not hitting somebody with a pickaxe that turns into a sword. Right? Hey, what else does being kind to somebody mean? Okay, we're stuck on presents. I know that it's like when you talk about a dog and you're gone. So, <laughs> kindness. That is the, the uh, subject for the vacation church school, which is going to be attended by hopefully all of you and hopefully most all the adults in this congregation. Because first of all, it gives us a time to be together for us to get to know you better, for you to get to know the adults of the church better. And there is a Bible passage, one that I'm going to talk about, that just starts with, be kind. We, yes, you have something to... You've got to make friends. And that you do that by being kind, don't you? There's a saying that says, be kind. Yeah. Because everyone... You, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, but there's more. It's be kind, listen, because everyone you meet is dealing with something hard and difficult that you know nothing about. Somebody might be really sad that day, and you don't know that they're sad, or they may be angry about something, so you might not want to treat them nicely, but you got to realize we need to be kind to everybody anyway because we don't know what each of you are actually going through, right? Your mom? She fell. So, so by knowing that, are you making sure you're kind, right? Yes. So that's what we're going to talk about for the three days we're here, but we're going to have pizza, we're going to have games, we're going to have fun things to put together, but we're going to try to always remember that word from the Bible to be kind to everyone. All right, let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this teaching from the Bible of how important it is to just be nice to everyone. because. Everyone is, is struggling with something. We don't know 
if they're happy or sad or angry, it's hard to tell sometimes if something bad has just happened. So help us to, no matter what's going on in the lives of others, to be kind to them. Thank you for the children of this church and how they are kind and learning this for one another. And help us to gather together as multi-generations so that we can get to know our children and our children can get to know all of our lives. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very, very much. You can make the connection now. Let us pray for God's wisdom and understanding. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The New Testament reading this morning is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 29 and you can find it in the Pew Bible on page 189. Now before faith came, we were in prison and guard, guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself in Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise.
this Mental Health Awareness Sunday. Dealing with stress, I suggest you go back to the recording and listen to that time and time again. It's just, oh, thank you. Uh, a 60 second sermonette on the passage from Galatians when Paul was saying, uh, there is neither male nor female, slave nor free, uh, Jew or Greek, has sometimes been misinterpreted to think that there is no more diversity among us. That is very incorrect interpretation. And the interpretation is that in God's eyes, we are all children of God while maintaining our diversity as male, as female, as back then, as slave or free, and as Jew or Greek. So let us never forget to affirm our diversity, but yet knowing our unity in Christ and our oneness in God. Today's uh, assigned gospel lesson is from Luke 8. And just previous to this, Jesus tells his disciples, let's get into the boat and go to the other side. The other side was an idiom to mean non-Jewish territory and understanding of things, because they went to a place called Jerash, which is in Gentile territory. Very important in the interpretation of this passage to know where they were. In fact, in Luke, the only occasion where Jesus ministers outside of the Jewish people in uh, their land. So then the passage continues. Then they arrive at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on the land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now, there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to see Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in a right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by the demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this word. Amen. I need to 
say right from the start that this sermon will not actually address this passage. There is so much involved with it, it would take at least two sermons just to get through the biblical part. Because instead, a vast majority of folks in this day and age do not believe in literal demon possession. Instead, they use this story as a jumping off point to address issues of mental health, which is what, if you take it literally, they believe the man was suffering from. And since 1949, May has been recognized as Mental Health Awareness Month. Now, I am aware that this is June and a particularly important day known as Juneteenth, let alone Father's Day. Yet I want to use this occasion as I try to, at least once a year, to address the issues involved with mental health awareness. To put it in perspective, think about your physical health. We all have days when we feel a bit sore, have a headache, or are extra tired, that doesn't necessarily mean you're sick. You're sick when something suddenly and significantly changes for the worse or prevents you from functioning properly. And mental health is similar. The occasional bad day should be expected. But when things that used to be easy become a lot more difficult, something is going on. Instead of focusing on the physical symptoms, we need to look at our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. So let's start with a checklist. Please make a mental note, pun intended, of those things that seem to apply to you and especially that have been experienced within the past two and a half years or so, but more specifically, even now. A lack of motivation, restlessness, and by the way, I will not be looking, and if I happen to catch your eye, I'm not looking at you because this is what I think you're dealing with, okay? I'll look up at the balcony, up at the pipes. Lack of motivation, restlessness, easily agitated, frustrated, or moody, feeling overwhelmed, feeling like you're losing control, feeling bad about yourself, feeling sad or depressed, feeling anxious, constant worrying, racing thoughts, disorganized, inability to focus, Overly pessimistic, withdrawn, change in appetite, change in sleep patterns, procrastinating and avoiding responsibilities, increased use of alcohol, drugs, or cigarettes, fidgeting, pacing, and other nervous behaviors. Well, these are just some of the emotional, cognitive, and behavioral symptoms associated with stress. And there's another list dealing with the physical symptoms of stress. But stress is just the body's natural reaction to either real or perceived harm when threatened, often known as the fight or flight syndrome. Stress is simply a part of life. And our bodies are designed to handle small doses of stress with symptoms lasting not too long. But we are not equipped to handle long-term chronic stress without consequences. In other words, developing more serious mental health issues. As we already know, mental health experts have recorded an extreme rise in chronic stress due to these past two plus years of the COVID-19 pandemic. Add to that, today, divisive politics, the current state of the economy and increasing financial burden, 
and social and cultural battles over everything from a woman's right to choose to the epidemic of gun violence to fears about our democracy itself. All of these things contribute to a collective stress levels. And during this time, it's been estimated that 30 to 50 percent of all Americans had or have diagnosable anxiety or depression, or both, more than double the pre-COVID-19 levels. And for those of us, and I include myself, who already struggle with mental health issues of depression and anxiety, things became even worse, and to some extent even are. So yes, now is a good time to focus on mental health awareness. Chronic stress, however, is just one small piece of the puzzle. Last year, John Pavlovitz, our Harold E. Hill Lecture Series speaker in 2018, posted an article that I then shared on my Facebook page. It's entitled, If You Don't Have Mental Illness, Here's What It's Like. Yes, it's something that John struggles with as well. And he goes into detail on how things like depression and anxiety affect, at times, what we simply can and cannot do, especially as it applies to interactions with others. So he writes, we're not ignoring you, or flighty, or lazy, or irresponsible. We just can't do what seems to be a simple thing to you, like send an email, return a text, make a phone call, show up. Because our heads have made it impossible. Our inconsistency is not a choice, it is a symptom. We may cancel unexpectedly, we may not call at all, we may seem like we don't care, but we do. That's why this is as difficult as it is. And he concludes, if you don't suffer from mental illness, it may be hard to understand those of us who do. And we get that. So be patient. Keep inviting us. We're trying. So yes, when living with a mental health concern, it's common to feel the like no one understands what you are going through. And if this applies to you, as it does to me, know that you are not alone. Help is out there, and recovery is it's possible. And I've learned throughout my years in ministry that sharing even a little vulnerability with others by anybody goes a long way in opening a door to allow others to realize that they are not alone in their struggles. You are not alone in yours. And a good question then for us as a community of faith is how can we develop an increasingly welcoming and hospitable culture around mental health issues? Much of we have done in dealing with other societal issues like LGBTQ inclusion and the work of anti-racism. Well, thankfully, there are a lot of excellent resources out there, and they can be of great help. But a major resource, and this might surprise you, involves our own denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA. In 2018, four years ago, on the 10th anniversary of a very important paper called Comfort My People, a policy paper on serious mental illness, the 223rd General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA called for a church-wide survey on the status of mental health ministry within our denomination. And it also approved a renewable $250,000 grant to launch a new Presbyterian Mental Health Network. 
and hire a full-time associate for mental health ministries. And available now is their remarkably helpful website, www.pmhn, for Presbyterian Mental Health Network. Org. And their mission statement reads, facilitating connection, building community, supporting innovation in mental health ministries. And this is their vision statement. We're here to facilitate supporting and supportive partnerships among communities of faith, individuals, and organizations. We want to come alongside those seeking to compassionately walk with people who live with mental health concerns and their loved ones. We want to help reduce stigma and recognize neurodiversity. We hope to encourage mental and emotional well-being among all. Well, one of the many resources that you can click for further information on that website is entitled 12 Things We Wish You Knew from Individuals Living with Mental Illness to Pastors and Churches. So with much the same effect as John Pavlovitz's article, I'll mention eight. One, mental illness is a medical issue, a disease. Anyone can have a mental illness. It's not a sign of weakness or failure, nor is it the fault of the parents or the ill person. Two, mental illness is treatable. Early detection and treatment are essential to improving chances for recovery. Mental illness, though, is not cured. Recovery is an ongoing process unique to each person, which allows the person to carry on in daily living and learn to cope with the illness in a way that makes possible a fulfilling life. Three, mental illness cannot be prayed away. That message must be understood and adopted by pastors and shared with congregations. Bad information on this can alienate people with mental illness forever and cause irreparable harm to them and their loved ones. And four, substance use disorder. By the way, that's the new term for substance use abuse or substance abuse, or even addiction. Substance use disorder is a mental illness, not a moral failing. Five, support for people with mental illness also involves a network of their loved ones, their congregation, their friends, their doctors, and counselors. Six, People living with mental illness vary in the level of confidentiality they desire. And seven, many people living with mental illness and their loved ones want to be able to talk about mental illness. And while most church members will not openly express their problems, a significant number will approach the pastors and others in the church to share mental illness-related issues when trust has been earned. And eight, living with a mental illness can be incredibly isolating and lonely for both the individual with the illness and their loved ones and caregivers. So it's important for all of us to recognize that mental health issues do not discriminate. The emotional pain and suffering that accompanies these disorders can touch anyone. And 20 years before the Comfort My People paper, our General Assembly released a paper report in 1988 entitled, The Church and Serious Mental Illness. And Florence Kraft, a Presbyterian elder and author of that 1988 General Assembly report, addresses the church's response 
and it is just as valuable today as it was 34 years ago. At one point she writes, but medicine and technology cannot heal socially inflicted wounds. Pills cannot overcome social ostracism, stereotyping, and stigmatizing. Only open dialogue and the attitude of inclusiveness can reconcile the fear, uncertainty, even the repugnance felt by, quote, normal persons in the presence of those recovering from mental illness. And the degradation, fear, hesitancy, doubt, and anger felt by those who have suffered psychiatric labeling. Well, in this inclusive view of a community of faith like ours, the church must provide a safe space of mutual trust and respect necessary for open and frank dialogue. And as people of faith, we need to talk about mental health conditions out of our belief that God's design is for all humans to be, be treated equally in dignity and in rights, free to lead lives of wholeness and fullness. So let us actively work to eliminate the stigma associated with mental health conditions. Seeking professional help is not a sign of weakness, it is a sign of strength. And this is true and common for pastors as well. Let us educate ourselves so that we can be a safe and supportive community. For our goal is to be a community of faith for everyone is valued for who they are. A place where each person is welcome to participate, including individuals with mental health challenges. So College Hill can be a powerful force in overcoming fear and stigma by living into how those who suffer must be regarded. And that is with respect, with patience, as beloved children of God, and with a deep appreciation for the unique gifts that they bring to our community, where they and where we are recognized as members of the body of Christ, the church. Well, this is just the beginning of a much needed conversation and action. And may our welcome and hospitality be extended equally to all people. We know that, we hear it all the time. Let's make sure we incorporate that deeply into our hearts, minds, being, spirits, and behaviors. And to those of us who struggle, never forget that you are not alone. Amen. Join me with the litany of response. Compassionate God, we pray for those who are affected by any form of illness, health condition, anguish, and pain. Merciful God, bring, bring comfort, comfort and wholeness. Grant courage to those affected by any of the conditions categorized as mental illness. Loving God, bring encouragement and hope. Grant strength and compassion to family and friends who offer care, support, and help. Compassionate God, bring strength and energy. Grant us wisdom to remove the stigma of mental illness. Help us to welcome those who are hurting into the community of faith that all might find a place of inclusion in your church. God of wisdom, bring guidance and inclusiveness. Grant perseverance to those who fight for justice and equality for persons with mental health conditions. God of justice, bring inspiration and persistence.
strengthen, empower, and unite us for action. Make us channels of care and responsive to the needs of all people. Eternal God, use us in your mercies. Hear our prayer. Amen. In gratitude to God, let us gather our pledges and offerings. The offering plates are located just inside the sanctuary doors, and you can drop your offering off before or after the service. You may also mail it in or donate on the church website. Well, since we've already done the doxology this morning, do we want to go do to the top of the page and we'll do the glory. <laughs> on the promise of hope, peace, of life, of community to all in need of your gifts and presence in their lives. Amen. <clears throat> Raise your hand if you actually consciously made a thought that we were singing the doxology instead of the Gloria. Really? Good for you. I did because I sing the tenor part, and the tenor part for the for the uh, doxology goes really high, and I realized I'm singing really high too early in the service, so <laughs> something was up. Thank you for that, Mike. I do want to make a quick uh, mention about the passing of the plates. We had a, a thorough discussion about that at our session meeting, and why it was recommended that we continue not to pass the plates, but have them at the back of the sanctuary, at least for now is because even though it's been pretty well proven that uh, touching things like that do not spread COVID, that we know that there are probably some people who are still uncomfortable touching something that someone else has touched. So we decided let's keep it like that, perhaps until maybe the fall, maybe there'll be a time when we can pass the place again, because we also recognize the importance of the ritual of passing a plate and contributing uh, as opposed to just mailing in or, or dropping it off kind of thing. But, so we've been thinking about these things, but that's why we're not passing the plate right now. Uh, draw your attention to the bulletin insert concerning prayer requests. We're certainly praying for all of those struggling with mental health issues and those who are recovering from illnesses, um, which there are several. This week we are praying for the Equality Center, uh, OKEQ and Pride Month celebrations, which as you've heard will be next Saturday, the 25th will be the Pride Parade. And uh, our, we got an email sent from the Equality Center assuring us after those folks from Idaho were found in the U-Haul, uh, those na white nationalists on their way to a Pride Parade to cause trouble, that it, security has been greatly increased at the Tulsa Pride Parade, uh, both within the parade route itself and those who will be plain closed along the way. So safety, uh, we truly hope and believe, will not be an issue. So uh, wanted you, though, to know about that. And within our presbytery, we're praying for Eastern Oklahoma, uh, we're praying for First Presbyterian Church in Poto and for First Presbyterian Church in Antlers. Um, Mike, would, did you go to the church in Antlers? Weren't you from Antlers? Where were you from? Mounds. Mounds. See, they're really close. That's why. <laughs> oh my God, Antlers is way the heck down there. Never mind. I need a geography lesson. Sorry, guys. 
Let us be together in a few moments of silent prayer, and then I'll pray. God of love and grace on this Father's Day, we give you thanks for fathers and for their meaning and the work in the lives of their children. Sometimes difficult, always loving, whether we always perceive that or not, but thank you for their support and dedication. But also on this day, we recognize the national holiday of Juneteenth, where we celebrate freedom for the black community, the end of slavery, for it was on June 19th of 1865 when those slaves in Galveston, Texas, finally heard the news of emancipation, which was proclaimed a full three years earlier, taking that long to get to them. So we pray, dear God, for continued change. We can encounter you still today in the faces of those whom society has pushed to the margins. Guide us through the love that you revealed to establish the justice you proclaimed, that all people might dwell in harmony and peace, united by that one love that binds us to each other and to you. We pray for a change of our routine worship and work, that it may be changed into genuine encounter with you and our better selves, so that our lives will be changed for the good of all. So may we continue the fight for full liberation for all people. Yes, for people for color and also for our indigenous siblings, as well as those in the LDG, LGBTQ community. May we as a people begin to heal and be reconciled to each other freely in love and justice. For God, we can't fully celebrate while others are in need of liberation, whether it be from poverty and persecution or injustice. So God, we acknowledge that racism is still prevalent in our world today. And we acknowledge that many of our dear siblings have suffered due to this divisive spirit. Today we repent for the harm we have caused others because of the sin of racism. And we pray that you will lead our nation as we rebuild ways of thinking, being, and doing that honor and serve all people. So loving God, we pray that you will remove all spirits of division and alienation and replace them with your love, unity, and peace and bring healing and righteousness to broken systems in education, family care, unemployment, health care, criminal justice, and housing, knowing that we need healing from wounds of trauma. And we pray, of course, for those that we know are in need of your healing, those who need physical healing, and certainly emotional and mental healing, and spiritual healing. So hear those prayers we have prayed silently today as we now pray together, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
are sent out into a hurting world as a sign of God's love and reconciliation. So go forth, carrying God's peace and compassion to all you meet. We go out as forgiven and empowered people to shatter stigmas and to welcome all, leaving no one outside. So as you go from this place this day, know that God goes before you to lead you in the way. That God goes behind you to encourage you. That God goes above you to bless you. God goes beneath you to support you. That God goes beside you to befriend you. And God goes within you to empower you to live your life to the glory of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.